Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here is part three of the Mini Cooper Race Store. I know I call it restoration, but it's just a, a head job. Restoration sounds more intense and more fancy. But anyway, here it is again. Here's the problem that happened when the head overheated. I'm gonna go ahead and strip all all the little goodies off of it, all, all of these little thingy maboppers, and then as soon as we get all all that taken care of, then we'll go ahead and start working on the valves and get all the valves done. Uh, we're gonna pause the video. Be back in a flash. We'll be at the next stage. Okay, I told you I'd be back in a flash. Well, anyway, I've stripped it all down. Um, the exterior stuff, anyway, I got all that out of there, and all this here, and all of the timing adjusters and everything. This one was quite interesting because this is spring-loaded, and this was actually spun around, and I, and I pulled that out of there, and now I don't know if this just gets put in, and then the, the, uh, the stepper motor, screw motor, whatever you want to call it, uh, readjusts it after it fires up. I don't know, but uh, I'll have to do some research on that to find out how to install that. It goes right through here, but uh, we'll cover that later on when we're going back together. But anyway, now I'm going to start removing the caps off of the camshaft here, and we'll see how those bearings look well actually they're not bearings they're just the caps uh, i would rather call it uh, bushings more than a bearing but anyway we'll go ahead and uh, check them out see what they look like start okay i've got the exhaust cam out and you probably can't really see much of this on camera there's there's a little bit of wear on the bearings, but um, or the caps, but um, I don't really see that as anything to really stress out about. It looks like normal wear of an engine with a hundred thousand miles on it. Um, there is a little scoring on this one here, but you can't feel it. Your your thumb don't go on it. Your nail doesn't grab any of the, the wear marks. Uh, they're really defined in the camera, but uh, they are very smooth. And and it goes the same thing with the, the head side. Everything looks fantastic. I, uh, I completely would not, uh, and you can see that the camshaft itself looks just as good. There's no uh, no obvious signs of wear on the lobes or the bearing surface. Everything looks really good on the exhaust side. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. The head is completely apart. Here's that back shaft. And like all the other areas, it looks in great shape. I see nothing wrong with this. Now to pull the valves out. And then I will mark and bag up all the bolts so I know where they go. And then I will uh, take this off to the machine shop and have it worked over. And here's all my parts. I, I have kept all of my lifters, uh, tappets, I think they call them, uh, and rocker arms. Uh, for the exhaust, they're all over here in order, and for the intake side, they're all over here. And these uh, these springy things, earlier in my videos, I was telling you I didn't know exactly how to address them, but now I know. Um, the springs should have been relieved in some way, some fashion. I don't know exactly how they're supposed to be. But they should have been relieved and um because they are very very tight and i don't even know how i'm supposed to get these little little doodads back in there 
Well, everything's in order. Everything looks good. It just needs to be cleaned up and got ready for the rebuild. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to go on and I'm going to pull that one valve out, which is right here, that blew the seat because I'm really curious to see what that looks like. That's what I'm going to do. Be back in a flash. All right, guys. Well, it is a part, and you can see. By that angle, but maybe on this side. You can see where right here under here you can see a lip that you see where uh, where the bottom of this is right right where my fingernail is it's supposed to be sitting right there so you can see how far it has lifted up out of the head and of course you can see that side again so that is reason why I have to take it into the machine shop and plus I want to get the head resurfaced and check for cracks look at that mess in there look at that. those messes look at that holy moly what was happening in there that's it I have every all of my nuts bag bagged up I have my nuts in bags uh, they are labeled with a little piece of paper so I know what side they go on so I don't mix anything up Here's all, all the valves, and these exhaust ones look pretty white. See that, man? That is just glowing in the light. But um, that's about it. I don't really have anything to say about it, just showing you all the parts. Those spring things, those worry me. I don't know how the heck I'm going to get those in there. I have an idea, though. We shall see. Okay guys, the next video you see of this head here, it's going to be completely cleaned up and ready to start seating valves and building. But until then, I'm probably going to go back over to the car here and start cleaning the engine compartment out. There's a lot of dust and dirt and everything and that's what I can be doing while I'm waiting for parts and the machine shop. Sounds like a good plan to me. What I'm going to be doing until I get that back is I'm going to be cleaning the engine compartment. I cannot stand a dirty, grungy engine compartment with dust and grease everywhere. So what I have done is I've already started, and I started over here, and as you can see up here and stuff, I've started cleaning, cleaning the area with my fine toothbrush there, the one I use every day on my teeth. And um, I'm going to start scrubbing with that in all the little corners and wiping everything down. And before you know it, uh, this engine compartment is going to look brand new. It's going to be ready for that new head. Um, I'm even going to come up here and start cleaning the hood. I'm going to look for a hood insulation because I know there should be something here. So I'm going to go ahead and find one of those and try to get it get it bought and installed. Depends on how much I have to spend because I had to spend $450 for that head and now I have to spend about two or three to get it serviced and back ready to build. So I'm going to be putting out a lot of money but I'm still going to be well under blue book value of this car which is the important thing. You never will want to get in over blue book because then you might as well have bought the car running. From someone else all right guys this is the way it looks now and I'll uh, show you in stages I'll get halfway across the engine all the way up and then I'll show you before and after see you soon okay well I've got the left side here pretty much clean there's a little more detailing work down done in the cracks that I do want to clean up but just to give you an idea, you can see the halfway line, right? And then over here is nice and shiny and clean and everything. Same thing with down here. You you could see, you know, it's going to need a little more detailed work, like down in that corner I just pointed at. I didn't realize that was so gross. But all up in here is clean. Down through here is clean. And here is clean. The glare is 
make it look like there's dirt, but there's actually not in those areas. And then of course we clean over here and then you can tell where the dirty stuff starts back. All that there's got to be cleaned. Just uh, take that as comparison when I get done. Looks like a mess under there. I'm not going to be able to get everything, but I'm going to make it look 10 times better. All right, guys. I've had enough of doing this by hand. I'm going to use a little bit of magic. Video magic. I want to snap my fingers, and when I do, the whole engine compartment is going to be clean and ready to go. Ready, set, ta-da! What a great trick that was, wasn't it? But now we've got the, the engine compartment pretty much cleaned up. Uh, when I get the engine together and running, I'll go through and I'll detail all the visible spots again. And um, we won't worry about the spots that can't be seen. But as you can see, what a difference it made. That rail I haven't cleaned yet, by the way. But what a difference cleaning this up has made to this car. It looks like it is ready to run. Looks like I could fire this baby up. Oh, there's my toothbrush. Can't forget that. I gotta brush my teeth before work tomorrow. Anyway, um, like down in there, there's some areas, there's tubes and things that hide all that. So I probably won't mess with too much of that. I might go around the clamps again and, and clean up a little more detail, but uh, I gotta wash up my rags. My rags are all gross and dirty, but uh, there it is. Engine compartment's ready to start prepping the block for a rebuild. Um, I still gotta get the crank nut off and get that chain removed. As soon as I get that off, I can uh, start start getting the guides and everything ready to go in. Of course, I'm not gonna put the guides in until the head's all on and torqued down, but uh, for the most part, she's ready to rock. Alrighty guys, welcome back to my channel. This is a side video because right here is the crankshaft bolt here, and I need to get it off. And um, they sell a special tool at like $110. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to manufacture a tool to use to remove that bolt. And all I have to do is hold the crankshaft still in a safe manner so that I, I can loosen that bolt. And here's what I've got planned. Okay, here's the old harmonic balancer. I'm replacing this because of this chewed up rubber center part if that continues to deteriorate this will be rattling and it can cause all kinds of problems with the car i have this bar that's from my engine stand it's the only thing i could find that would be strong enough to uh, to hold the crankshaft still and what i'm going to do is i'm going to grind the edge down with my grinder and then i'm going to grind an area of my harmonic balancer pulley here and I'm going to weld that bar across here and then I should be able to to put the bolts back in here and tighten them up and then I can use this bar to hold the crankshaft still. Now again there's a proper tool to uh, to buy that will do the same exact thing. It mounts to those three bolts, it has a bar, you hold it while you undo the bolts or the main bolt that is and I'm going to save myself that money because uh, if you've been watching my series about the mini you'll understand I've put out quite a bit of money getting this car back together but anyway um, I'm going to go ahead and grind those down uh, and I'll be back in a second I have successfully ground down this edge here I'm going to take it down and make it a little flatter so it sits a little flatter across my my pulley here but uh, the goal is is to set it here and weld that to the pulley I shouldn't need too much of a weld but uh, I'll get it there enough and hopefully it will be strong enough to hold in there so I can get this done 
and my goal is to cut this off this pulley and be able to use it for my engine stand it's just to to rotate the the engine so i should be able to still use it after i cut it off but anyway i'm going to go ahead and grind this a little flatter and then we're going to set up the welder and get it welded okay now i have this uh set up in my clamp here and these surfaces there's a total of four surfaces on each side of the rubber piece that i'll be able to get my stick into uh, I use a wire-fed Harbor Freight welder. I've welded with it a few times, and say what you will about Harbor Freight tools, I have had no problems. I use all Harbor Freight wrenches, screwdrivers, and everything, and I'm completely satisfied with quality. If you haven't tried Harbor Freight uh, tools for a while, give them another shot, because when I first started using them, they were crap. But, like all things, uh, Prices for manufacturing gets cheaper and cheaper as you go, and and uh, they make a good quality tool now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tack the weld, and I'll be right back. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick my welder. Here's Chicago Electric. Uh, this is not the smallest one that they make, and it's not the largest one. This is a wire-fed welder, which should uh, should work just fine for this here. It's nothing too big. I'm hoping everything goes well. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. We're going to give it a shot. I'm not going to record the welding because I don't want to fry out my camera or something to that effect. So I'll be right back as soon as I get it tacked, and then we'll continue on from there. Okay, right now I got just a little tack mark there to hold it in place. Um, and I'm going to continue getting a good solid bead across there. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, I've got it welded. Yes, it's an ugly-ass weld. I am not a professional welder by any means. This is like the third time I've welded. But uh, I guess the the main main thing is that it's pretty much attached, and I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to break off there. So I'm going to go ahead and get it mounted to it and see if we can get any response out of it. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got the pulley on there. It's tightened down with the bar here. We're going to go ahead and get the ratchet on there and see if we can bust it loose. You guys can watch right here. Okay, due to room constrictions, I had to get, I had to move things out of the way. But, to my surprise, my weld held, okay, and that bolt is now free to come out and that is how I got my bolt off and I'm pretty sure that it will go back on the same way I'll I'll just have to work with it and, and get it on there okay guys here is the reason why I pulled out that net because this piece here slides into the timing chain gear at the bottom and when you slide this out it comes out in a piece and here is where the the crankshaft seal rides and I have a brand new one of those but we're going to reuse this one this one looks just perfectly fine I don't see anything wrong with it and the thing is is when these things get put on they have to be torqued to the exact specification because these things have no locking key and uh so when you tighten this up it pinches that gear right there it pinches it with torque and holds it in place so you can imagine if you did not torque that enough that that gear there would slip and your crank would turn without the cams turning and that could cause bent valves and whatever else that uh, happens when you lose that gear there so um make sure that when you reinstall this piece it is installed exact specs uh, if i remember i will post the exact torque uh, sequence for this piece uh, at on the description. Alright guys, uh, next 
After that piece comes out, then you can just slide the chain up. And normally all the guides come out with this, but I pulled them out before. And voila, there is the crankshaft timing gear and uh, the chain. Uh, I have a whole new set to go in here, so that will be discarded. That is no longer useful. But uh, as you can see down in there, there's also the gear down there with the chain on it, and that turns the oil pump. And um, to replace that, it's pretty uh, difficult job, so uh, we're not going to do that. There was no problem with oil pressure. It was just simply a, a, a valve seat that had come dislodged. But anyway, uh, all right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this side video. I may or may not include this in my normal series on the Mini, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it uh, helps you on your project. All right, since we've... I just removed this hose here that I showed you guys earlier that I broke. Uh, it was pretty brittle, but I removed it, and, it, and what it is is like a... A, uh, a vent tube from the uh, valve cover. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove the water pump. Um, there's, I believe, four bolts that hold the water pump on. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start getting those off. And they are 10 millimeters. Okay, to pull this water pump out, I believe it'll probably come out this way the best. Okay, let's try from the bottom. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and get it from the bottom here. There you go. Fell out. First glance, the water pump doesn't look bad or anything, um, but again, you, you you never really know what what is happening to your water pump. The impeller could come loose from the shaft, and that's something that you wouldn't really know offhand. But anyway, I got a new one coming. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the collection box until we got all of our parts. I always like to compare my parts so that uh, I know that I'm getting the right ones. Okay, and you see this lovely pile of debris here? There almost looks like grease. Let's see if I can get that to focus a little better. No. That almost looks like grease. It's uh, it's like a bearing grease. It might be a little bit of oil mixed into the water due to the blown head gasket. So we'll go ahead and make sure that's cleaned up. All right, well, um, other than cleaning up gasket surfaces, uh, I'm pretty much at a standstill until my other parts get here. I'm still waiting on the head. Oh yeah. On my changing my oil on my F-150, I kind of hinted to a, a horrible mix-up that happened with my heads. And here is the story. I'll go ahead and let you observe my, my engine while I explain the story. I get the original head off. Call around Phoenix area. Not anybody I spoke to knew of somebody or could repair that dislodged valve seat at all. Okay, so I called up my guys at Clearwater Cylinder Heads in Florida. And I talked to them about it and they said, no problem, send it over. So I boxed it all up, took it into the UPS store here 
near my house and shipped it off. Well, I received no tracking information, nothing. The place did not receive it when it was supposed to be there, yada, 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 all this stuff. And, and so we called the UPS store and they didn't know where it was at. And they said that they could put a tracer on it and it'll take eight to 10 days. Well, I need to get my car up and going. So I went ahead and I went out to a, uh, a business in Phoenix that deals with engine cores. And I got me a good rebuildable head. Well, that's the head that I showed you guys over here. It's completely rebuildable and I, it looks good. But then, then I was thinking, well, let's check eBay again because I had checked it in the past and there was no heads for this engine at all. It's a special type of head that is not on every car. So I go and I look on eBay and I find this head for $1,500 that, that will fit. I'm like, you know, by the time I spend all this money here and there, that head there is gonna cost me about 1100 to get on the engine. So I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and buy this head and call it good. I'll have a perfectly good head, throw it right on there, and I won't have to seat any valves and stuff. And I'm sure you're aware of how crappy of a job that is, time consuming. But I, uh, so I went ahead and ordered it. Well, that following Monday after it had shipped out, I, uh, I got this call on my way home from work and it was actually uh, the cylinder head place over in Florida and they told me that they had a cylinder head for my Mini Cooper ready to ship out to me. Well, this completely blew me away because I thought it was lost. They didn't call me to tell me that it, it had arrived there. So now I have this head coming from Florida. I have a head coming from eBay and I'm several thousand dollars into the head, which is ridiculous. So anyway, the head that I ordered off eBay, it can go back. So I got the head coming in from Florida and it should be here probably by Monday or Tuesday. Uh, it's Saturday right now. Well, that's it for this segment. Um, coming up on this video is going to be prepping the engine for the head, getting those cylinders cleaned up some, and then uh, we'll go ahead and start mounting the head. Well, all right, everybody, today is the day. We've got our brand new head back from the machine shop. Uh, it's been a hell of a time getting this back. This was the one that was lost by UPS and then found again. And it's finally made it back to us. It cost us $400 to get this head completely over, overhauled and I checked out by my guys down at uh, Clearwater Cylinder Heads down in Florida. And um, it's ready to mount. We've got all of our parts. We've got our, our camshaft alignment tool. We've got our head gasket. We've got our vent tube here that I broke as we were pulling the car apart. It was really brittle. We have our, our timing chain and guide kit here to install. We've got the, the plastic tube that actually broke and caused the water to leave the engine and that's what caused all of our problems. We've got our intake gaskets. We've got our brand new harmonic balancer. This is a piece to the head. And we've got our, our valve cover gasket and we've got our water outlet. This, this piece here uh, houses the thermostat and you have to buy this whole piece in order to replace the thermostat. Uh, it was only about 35 bucks, so that, that wasn't too bad. And this, I believe, is all the parts. We're ready to start going back together. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to clean up the piston heads and the, the uh, block surface. Uh, 
They're pretty gritty and gross in there. We're going to get them all cleaned up so they look nice and clean and ready for the new head. And then we'll move on from there. Okay, right now I have prepared the pistons and the head surface for mounting the new head. I got all the carbon off, shined them up. There's a little bit left in there, but you can't get everything. Everything else should burn up if the engine's running right. I cleaned up the exhaust gasket there. I'm going to go ahead and reuse that one. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's nice and smooth, no rusting or pitting or anything. So now we're going to go ahead and go over and clean up the head surface and then get this thing set down on there. Okay, we've reinstalled a brand new water pump back in there. I've coated it with a little bit of RTV Red. It says not to, but a little dab will do you. And then we'll go, go ahead and now we're going to lay the head onto the engine block. We've got the new head gasket. This is a 90 millimeter head gasket. And we're going to go ahead and get the head on here, get some bolts installed. Um, I installed this this uh, tube here that uh, I had broken and uh, I have loosened up the intake a little more so it sits back further. So probably won't have any issues with that one this time. But uh, be right back. Okay, right now we've got the head mounted and now we're putting the head bolts in finger tight and then we're going to start doing the torque down sequence. I'm going to record that sequence because these have a, a weird torque spec. They are, let me check my notes, 22 foot pounds in a specific order. These being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And that is the sequence that you have to go in order to torque them down correctly. And, uh, if I can get this to focus on there. That is the torque sequence. I apologize if I was off on my description, but uh, these two bolts here, 11 and 12, are right here, 11 and 12. And then 13 is off to the side, which is the one that's back here, and that's the little one. That's done last. I've seen on some videos where, uh, where that was done first. And I, I like to go with what I find in repair manuals and not uh, what I find on YouTube. Uh, YouTube's full of a lot of misinformation. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get these hand tightened and then we're going to be right back and we're going to show you the torque down in sequence because it's 22 pounds in that order. And then after you get 22 pounds, then you go and 90 degrees through that sequence and then go through the sequence again at 90 degrees again and that's where it gets complicated that's why I want to record it because if I lose track I can look back on my video and not guess at if I got one torqued down correctly be back I am okay first we are going to just go through and tighten everything down to the 22 We're going to go in the sequence that the book says. Move over. We're going to move up. That one was taken down all the way. right here. Okay, now I'm going to go back through because of the way that head gaskets compressed like that. I'm going to go ahead and just go through the sequence again. You see how I'm getting a little more torque?
And as I go outer, there'll be less and less. Okay, less on the outside. Okay, now I'm gonna pause for just a second and then come back and we're gonna do the 90 degree. Okay, now we're gonna go through the first stage of 90 degree turns. It's torqued down to 22, and now we're gonna to have to do 90. 90 is a very simple measurement. We start off, We start off this way and we know this way right here would be 90. So let's start. 90. Ninety. Ninety. Okay, that completes the first 90 degree pass. And now we have to go back through and do all the same pattern, 90 more, and then the head will be mostly torqued down, and then we'll do the outside ones, which are pretty easy as well. Okay, here we go. Okay, now all of the main head bolts are now torqued down. Now we're gonna go ahead and swap sockets because this is a smaller one. The head bolts is a, is a 12. I don't know if I'll focus too good, but that is a 12. And that is a star bit. It's not a regular socket. And now the outer ones, the smaller bolts, are actually a 10 star as well. And these here go down to 22. No, these go down to 11. That's why you always check your notes because nobody's perfect. These are going to go down to 11 pounds, foot pounds. Okay, and now we're going to take these each 90 degrees, 90 degrees, just like the other ones. One, two, there you go. Those front ones are all done. Now, the third one, the one on the back side here, that there is also a 10, and it will get torqued down to 22 pounds. Okay, the back one here is, what the hell? Oh, I guess I was right. Okay, that one there's done. That one goes to 22 pounds and stays. All right guys, we're now done torquing our head down. That is probably the most scariest part of the whole job here. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take these cams because I have the locking tool in the crank. So, so the, the, all the pistons are down even. So now I can take this tool right here, this crescent wrench, and I can turn the cams as much as I need to. And right here is a, is a stamped lettering that will need to be straight up and down in order to install the tool. There we go, there's that one, and here's this one right here. And so now the tools, the alignment tools, should go on just fine. Yes. Okay, right now we've got uh, the cams timed, the crankshaft is locked in place, and now all we have to do is replace the crankshaft seal, and once we do that, we can insert the timing chain assembly and start getting the timing chain all torqued out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pause the video, and we're going to uh, get that done, and then we'll be right back with you to show you the next process. Okay, now we're going to install our timing chain set here. Uh, the guides are, are set up in this fashion to where the little long hook thing is on the front side of the engine. Uh, make sure that tension is maintained as you are installing it because you don't want to kink like that down in here. So you want to make sure that everything is flowing nicely. And then this should set right down in here. Just like so. And you And you got to line up the insert down at the bottom. Got to line it up with the the timing chain gear down there, as well as the oil pump gear that is behind that. Okay, we've got the head all mounted. We've got the the uh, camshaft vanios on, and when you put these back on, you have to keep in mind that there's an intake and exhaust one that's specific for each so make sure you get those in order and i'm having an issue right now getting to that crankshaft bolt with a wrench that i can do proper degree tightening with because i'm going to do the crankshaft one first and then i'm going to move up here and do the uh the camshaft ones um i haven't installed the the guide for the top here, but this chain seems very, very tight. So I think we're uh, looking really good right now. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to remove this tire, the passenger side front tire, so that I can get in here. So I can get in here to the Crankshaft, that is my old pulley with my tool that I had made. Let me see if I can get that to focus. There you go. And that's where the bolt needs to be tightened up at. And um, of course, with the tire in the way, you can see how that is posing a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off the tire and get it, uh, get some room in here so I can bring that wrench out here with its extensions and tighten that properly. I'm going to go ahead and pull the tire off and I'll be right back. Okay guys, we took the tire off. We torqued that bolt down to the torque says, let me check my notes. 
crankshaft bolt, 37 foot pounds, and then 180 degrees. I actually went about 150 degrees because it started tightening up to the point where, you know, if you have experience with tightening bolts, you know when they're tight. And I felt that if I went 180 degrees, I was going to snap that bolt. So I went ahead and stopped. Um, the cams, uh, I torqued them down to 15 foot pounds first and then did 180. And I did it all the way to 180. Two turns of 90 is the only, only way I could do 100 because you start to wrench up straight, go like that, that's 90, and then do it again. And that's another 90. So 90, 90 is 180. So the top ones are done as well. So now I can pull off my, my crankshaft tool here that I have. I can go ahead and pull that old pulley off and continue on my build. Okay, well here's where I'm at. I got everything torqued down, the cams and the crank. I haven't removed my alignment tool yet, but I will in just a minute. I wanted to get that tube in. This is this is the tube here that broke. It goes into the back of the water pump, and that's what let all the water out, causing all the problems here. I've got it connected up to the brand new water uh, water outlet here, which houses the thermostat and I got the thermostat housing all installed tightened down and everything so she is ready to go and now we're just going to work on getting the brackets off turn over the engine see if everything looks and feels all right okay well um, I'm gonna warn you about something here that came across um, Right down here, I was putting these in here, and and I was using a a Torx socket to uh, drive in these studs because I removed mine to prevent having to do a bunch of loosening to the exhaust pipe here, and I lost that socket I was using and one of these bolts down this little hole. If I would have thought about it, I would have shifted this forward and and got it on the studs and probably saved me from losing them. But believe it or not, I can't find them. I have looked for probably half an hour. Every little nook and cranny I can find. I've been trying to get in there and find it. But there's nowhere to be seen. Okay guys, this is the day. I got the engine mostly together. I have to put the valve cover on. I wanted to wait till I got my oil so I could pour some oil on the cams just to get things oiled up. Got all the spark plugs in. Got the exhaust on. I didn't put the heat shield on yet. I'm gonna wait till she's running and everything and, and then I can go ahead and install that. But, uh, I have to install the valve cover and then I can um, start installing the the coil packs and the wires and then I have a, a water reservoir right here to install and then I will be able to turn the key or in this case push the button because it is push start. Got the breather to go in here and once uh, once I get that all done, I'll be ready to go. I wanted to show you guys the oil. Here's the oil that came out of it last night. Um, it is it is black, it, it needed change, but uh, to my surprise, it was not watery. It had no water in it at all. It looked like normal, dirty oil. There's no uh, particles of anything in it. It was uh, pretty clean uh, other than being dirty from miles. It's time guys, here we go. We're gonna try starting it up. 